Hello viewers, this is Milin and welcome to the DevOps Dean channel. In this video log, you will learn about how to become a DevOps engineer. You will learn what are the tasks and responsibility of a DevOps and to perform these tasks, which tools and technologies you need to know. First, we will look into what is DevOps. There are two parts. First is software development. In development, developer writes the code test it and push it to the repository. Second is IT operations. In operations, they deploy applications, configure infrastructure and maintain the servers. DevOps is the link between these two. We will look in detail about what is DevOps. As a DevOps, you need not to do coding, but you need to understand how the branch workflow is, which build tool is used, what are scanning tools are used, how the release process is carried out. Let's look at what is software lifecycle management. As we know, there are developers. They write code and push it to the repository. Mostly you will find Git. Now the code is ready to be deployed so that end user can use it and most of the time you will find a Linux servers. So let's understand what you need to learn in Linux. There are on-premises and cloud servers. As a DevOps, you need to create the infrastructure and to create that infrastructure, you need to learn Linux basics. You should get comfortable with command line interface and understand the shell commands. You need to learn about the Linux directory structures. You need to learn how to SSH into a remote server. After that, you need to view the logs. So you should be aware about how to view the logs. Now, DevOps and operations are not doing same work. As a DevOps, you need to understand that you should know the basics of IT operations. And keep in mind that you are not taking over the responsibilities of operations team. As there are qualified professionals are available. You should keep in mind that you should be aware of all these concepts. Let's talk about application deployment. Once the application is ready, it is required to deploy it on the servers. But here the question arises how the application release will take place, how to deploy application on the servers. As a DevOps, you need to take this responsibility and prepare a deployment solution. Not just build the solution, but it should be continuous and repeatable. You have application code on Git repository. As a DevOps, you need to integrate set of tools that will do the, the process. First, you need to do the build. For that, you have Maven, Gradle and NPM. As we are considering a Java application, so let's take Maven as our build tool. Then, for unit testing, Java application preferably use JUnit. So, as we are using JUnit. For the code scanning, Sonar Cube is the best solution to go for. So we will use Sonar Cube. As you know, containerization is the de facto to create or run the application. So as we are using a Docker, so we use Docker to build the image, then to perform the deployment steps, we rely on Ansible. Basically, we write Ansible playbooks. So mainly these tools stack that get used oftenly. Now let's take a look at how all these processes, all these tools are executed. First, the code should have successful build. So we do Maven build. Once the build is successful, then only it should proceed ahead. Next, the code should get unit tested. For that, J unit test cases should be running. Once the test cases get passed, 
then the code should move to the scanning. So SonarCube will scan your code and prepare a coverage report. Once the code coverage scanning is done, then the application image needs to be built. So here we are using Docker. So Docker will build the application image using a Docker file and it will push the code to the artifactory. This artifactory maintains the image version. Next, we will run an Ansible playbook to perform the deployment steps. The playbook will pull the latest image from the artifactory and in the end, the newly created application image gets deployed. Let's say in this case, we are deploying our Docker image into an OpenShift cluster, which is a Kubernetes based cluster. The steps from Maven build to Docker image is called as CI which is continuous integration and the steps from Ansible playbook to the OpenShift cluster is called as CD which is continuous deployment or continuous delivery. If we combine all these steps together then it forms a complete CI-CD pipeline. To run this pipeline we need a tool which will club all these steps together so nowadays there are many tools are available but preferably Jenkins is the most popular tool. So the conclusion is that a DevOps needs to prepare complete CI-CD pipeline. All the manual deployment steps should be converted into automated deployment process and to create this deployment process you need to learn the pipeline syntax. So, if you are writing a Jenkins pipeline, then Jenkins provide you a Jenkins pipeline syntax. Servers are either on on-premises or on cloud. Nowadays, mostly you will find cloud servers. There are cloud providers which provide the cloud infrastructure. Mainly, we have AWS, Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. There are others, but they are not widely used. Clouds are preferred infrastructure because it provides a cost effective and the most important thing is it is quickly provisioned. They provide their service as a platform and they works on a model which is pay as you go. They provide simple UI to create the resources. You can create your networks, you can create your servers, you can create your databases and you can deploy your application on those servers. As a DevOps, you need not to learn all cloud providers. You can learn one and you can easily switch to another if your organization is using the different one. As we know, applications are packaged as image as we talked about it earlier and runs as a container. So every application has their own container. So let's look at how we can do container orchestration. What do you mean by container orchestration? Orchestration includes spinning up the container, scaling up the container, deleting of the containers. So all these activity comes under container orchestration. Containers are more reliable when it is promoted to upper environments as they are very lightweight and it has only required dependency installed. Also it is packaged with the dependencies. To create application image Docker is the go-to solution for everyone. So you need to learn Docker. Once you start the containerizing application, the container numbers become huge in size. So we need a powerful and robust orchestration tool. Kubernetes is the standout tool in orchestration. It has been developed by Google. Later on, they made it open source. It is a powerful orchestration tool. It can manage large scale clusters. Kubernetes has also been integrated in cloud providers like Microsoft Azure, AWS and Google Cloud. As we move to cloud, it is extremely important to have your infrastructure as a code. Your infrastructure should be in a descriptive model. You can configure and provision your whole infrastructure using a code. 
it is very useful in a long run as you can have a visibility of your infrastructure code become a single truth of your infrastructure configs there are many popular tools are available like puppet chef ansible and terraform out of these ansible and terraform are widely used scripting is a very useful thing when it comes to an automation and devops most basic responsibility is to automate but that does not mean you need to learn the programming languages rather you need very basic programming skills as i said devops is to write ci cd pipeline so you need to know groovy scripting and when it comes to automation then python is the go to language for doing the automation script so as a devops you need to write scripts to automate repetitive task and scripts to do cross tool integration such as creating an incident on service now as we are using code for building infrastructure you must need to store your code on a version control system so as a devops you need to learn git as git is widely used one version control system now you must be overwhelmed with number of tools and technologies as they are in large numbers which uh, devops needs to know but you do not need to worry you just need to learn one tool in each category you should choose tools which are widely used from that category you must be wondering where to start i am publishing a devops solutions videos to learn these tools the video will be more organized and demo oriented the focus is on practical understandings along with conceptual knowledge so stay tuned if you consider this content is very useful for you then please like share and subscribe to my channel